Good day, uh, brothers and sisters. This is the last Sunday of 2023. Uh, katapusan na uh, Domingo sa Tuig 2023. And uh, God has been so good to all of us, I believe. Uh, I can say with all my heart, God has been so good to me and my household. And I am confident that He is also have been very good to you, uh, sustaining you all throughout the year, supplying you with everything that you need, keeping you, protecting, preserving your life, blessing you with every imaginable blessing, you know, according to his promise, and uh, promoting you in many ways so that uh, uh, you are not the same. You know, you're growing, you are increasing, you're expanding, you know the Lord more. You become a better peer person. You have matured, you know, uh, incredibly matured. You know, I can say many of you are truly matured uh, beyond your spiritual years, <laughs> spiritual age. That is why I am confident to say that uh, next year, because next Sunday will be first Sunday of next year. I am confident that next year, 2024, will be even better, my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to walk with the Lord, you know, deepen our relationship with Him through His Holy Spirit, you know, deepen our knowledge of Him as He provides us with wisdom and understanding. We shall know Him more, we shall know Him better, we shall know Him bigger, and our experiences, hallelujah, uh, will be better and bigger than before and our authority as well as our faith will increase so that we will be able to accomplish in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit bigger and better things for the glory of our Father. I believe so, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, because God is a mighty, wonderful, miraculous and marvelous God. He has still so many, many good things in his possession that he wants to give to his children, to his people. Hallelujah. Amen. So I am excited. Praise be to God. You know, praise be to God. So I want you to continue following us, walking with us. You know, hallelujah. And continue to uh, walk according to the vision, the assignment that the Lord has given us as his church, and that is to win souls and make them disciples. We have to continue to pray, call on the name of the Lord, because we can never rely on our own, but we only have to rely on the Holy Spirit who was given uh, by the Father through Jesus to help us. So for today's lesson, we will take a look at two verses written by Paul to the Christians in Philippi, Philippians 3, verse 2 and 3. And I believe this will prepare us, you know, for, for the next year, 2024. You know, and the Lord, we trust in Him, the Holy Spirit, who will keep on supplying, you know, supplying us with word, you know, with the line, with the message, supplying us with an understanding from Scripture, you know, to continue to feed us, continue to encourage us and strengthen us, so as we continue to engage in the work that he has called us to do. Of course, this is in partnership with him. So, hallelujah, our walk with the Lord, our Christianity, you know, is uh, actually returning uh, to the simpler kind, simpler form, you know. And uh, I believe this is, a, this is a direction that comes from the Lord. I believe it with all my heart. I have no doubt about this. Although I am not sure where it will lead us, because the Lord will lead us step by step, one step at a time. He does not show us the whole thing from the start, you know, because He has to require us to just trust Him. Just like Abraham, when He called Abraham, He did not reveal everything to Abraham all in one day, all at one time, in one encounter. No, it has to be a series of meet up with God, you know, and that is. The reason why Abraham has to rely on the Lord all the time. For what is the next 
direction of the Lord, where will the Lord lead him, and what path he will travel, etc. That's why it's called walking with God. We do never, we never stop. We continue to walk with God. Hallelujah and follow him. But also, very important that I need to remind everyone that what you are hearing from this broadcast every Sunday is only supplementary unto your own personal work with the Lord. Walk with God. You need to devote your time, not only in the morning, but throughout the day, in tune, tuning, tuning to the Lord, tuning in to the Lord through Spirit. And the Word of God is always available to you so that whenever the Spirit will remind you about some verse, some passage, some story in Scripture, you can immediately go and check, you know, because you have to trust that God will speak to you from what He is prompting you to know and to remember. So that that should be the primary basis of your spiritual feeding. You are learning to feed yourself. Because it is a personal walk, a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, this one is a good supplement to you. no? But this will not take the place of your own personal talking with God, your own personal listening to God, and your own personal obedience with God. Here to respect, this is your walk with God. We walk with God, so we talk with God. We walk with God, so we listen to God as He speaks to us, primarily to His Word. And you know, the result of which is we obey, you know, joyfully, gladly, excitedly, hallelujah, and faithfully, whatever he is speaking to us from his word. This will make our life on the edge, always. We are always on the edge, excited and thrilled, always. There will never be a dull moment when we walk with God in this way, hallelujah. The sense of unpredictability, will cause a lot of thrill and excitement because you can never anticipate what the Lord will do the next time in your life. Hallelujah. So let's go to this passage. <clears throat> What's out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh? Paul was referring to some people, especially of Jewish background, who claim to be Christians, who claim to be followers of Jesus, and yet, they were still holding onto the Old Testament laws and regulations, which they believe every Christian needs to comply. And so they are influencing other new believers, trying to enforce this uh, conviction of them on the new believers. Uh, they will tell them, oh, it's good that you have received Jesus, but that's not enough. You still need to subscribe to the Old Testament rules and regulations like circumcision and the many other rules and regulations. And so in this case, Paul calls them dogs and these are men who are evil. When you look at them because these are religious people, you can never detect the evil that is in their heart and their mind because from the outside, they look very nice, very cool, very dignified, very godly. But actually their intention and the source, you know, of their mind, you know, is not from the Lord. It is from Eve, the evil one. And Paul calls them mutilators of the flesh. Mm. So in verse 3 now, this is the focus of our lesson for the day. And I want you to take a note carefully of this because these are there are things here that are very important as we progress in our walk with the Lord, in our walk in the Spirit. Paul says, for it is we who are the circumcision. Now, meaning, we are the true circumcision. So what Paul was saying here, before we proceed to this one, let's go to Romans chapter 2. And the verse is verse 28 and 29. Because Paul here talks about circumcision. He says here, a man is not a Jew if he is only one outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. Verse 29, No, a man is a Jew if he is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the Spirit, not by the written code. Such a man's prey is not from men, but from God. 
So Paul was referring to the true circumcision, that true circumcision is not done by the flesh, not done in the flesh, but done by the Spirit in the heart of man. You know, the heart of man, meaning the inner being of man, which sometimes is also referred to our spirit, you know, it is the inner being, our inner man, should be, should undergo a circumcision. But it is not a physical one. You cannot see it with your physical eyes. But it is done by the spirit. It is the spirit that comes in as we repent of our sins and he breaks the hold of sin, especially pride, especially arrogance, especially rebellion in our heart so that we start on calling on God. We see the ugliness of our sin. We see the ugliness of our heart. You know, we see the corruption. We see how sin has defiled us. And we see there is no hope with ourselves and on ourselves. But our hope only comes through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our Savior. That's why we call on Jesus. We cry out with Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, help me. And that's when he comes by his Spirit to save us. Hallelujah. So Paul is saying circumcision is not outwardly, but it is done inwardly inside us, in our heart, in our spirit, by the Spirit of the living God, not by the written code. It's by the Spirit of the living God, but not by the written code. And our praise does not come from men, but from God. So go back to Philippians 2 verse 3 now. <clears throat> Philippians 3 verse 3, I should say. It is we who are the circumcision, in contrast to them who claim is to be the circumcision. But their circumcision was of the flesh. This circumcision was done according to the code of men. Ah, their circumcision was done in only to please men. But it was not the Spirit of God. Because true circumcision is done by the Spirit of God using the very Word of God, the Rima Word of God. Hallelujah. So what is the effect, the manifestation of this true circumcision? There are three things, as Paul has said the, here in this, in this verse, which will be a very good... Uh, what can we say? Guideline, you know, for our walk in the next coming year in 2024, you know, we, we can use these three things here, these which are the, the result or the manifestation of a true circumcision that happened in a person's life. And what is that? One, we who worship by the Spirit of God, you know, hallelujah. When we are genuinely circumcised by the Spirit of God, which would mean we are genuinely born of the Spirit of God, then we start worshiping God by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we start worshiping God by the Spirit of God. In one translation, instead of worship, he uses the word serve. Uh, we who serve by the Spirit of God. You, you see? We do not serve by our effort. We do not serve by obedience to the laws, laws and regulations of man. We serve according to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Our walk with God is walk by the Spirit of God. We rely on the Spirit of God. We who worship by the Spirit of God. Remember that God nowadays, since John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, you know, when Jesus said, now the, uh, the time is coming and now it's here, that those who will worship the Father, must worship them in spirit and in truth, for they are they that the Father is seeking. Ah, these are they whom the Father is seeking to worship Him, because God is spirit, and His worshipers must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So a true circumcision you know, manifests itself in a person's life, and he starts worshiping God by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm. We all know, already, I should say we already talk about what does it mean to worship God by His Spirit. Mm. You know? It is a day-to-day -day moment. This is the kind of worship that the Father is seeking. A worship that is no longer confined in a place. This Worship this it on, does not depend on the day. A worship that is not, you know, bound by buildings and rituals and so No. Because it is done by the Spirit. And with the Spirit of God, the Spirit is like a wind. There is no 
compartment, no space, no no place for the spirit. I mean, the spirit does not respect any place or any day. Hmm. The spirit is everywhere. Hmm. So we worship by the spirit of God. We serve by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we do things by the help of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So the next, the next is who glory in Christ Jesus. When a person is truly circumcised in his innermost being, he will glory in nothing and in no one else but in Christ Jesus alone. We glory in Christ Jesus. Paul was saying in Corinthians, we determine not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. We glory in Christ Jesus. Hmm. We rejoice or we delight in Christ Jesus. We take our pride in Christ Jesus. Amen. We do not glory in things. We do not glory in our possessions or positions, ranks, titles. We do not glory in our achievements or attainments or accomplishments. We do not glory in our friends, our connections, in high places. We do not glory in those things, in diplomas and titles. No, we don't glory in them. We glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Our spirit has been captured and conquered by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. And the spirit of the living God has only one passion in, in life. And that is to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. Make him known. Hallelujah. So a genuine person who is truly born of the Spirit, circumcised by the Spirit, will glory in Christ Jesus alone. Hallelujah. And then the other thing, yeah, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. <laughs> you know, When we glory in Christ Jesus, we don't put confidence in the flesh. Because they do not go together. You cannot put on the confidence in the flesh and glory in Christ. You cannot glory in Christ and then also be confident in the flesh. Interestingly, brothers and sisters, when you check this verse in the Good News Translation, this is what it says. We do not rely in rituals and ceremonies. So what it says, <laughs> we do not rely in rituals and ceremonies. Hallelujah. Is that that interesting? Huh? The flesh, he is referring to our ceremonies, rituals, programs, liturgies, huh? human credentials. <laughs> Who put no confidence in human credentials. I laugh a little bit because lately, you know, nowadays, more and more of our Christian friends, Christian leaders, you know, I've become interested so much in titles and credentials, you know. You know, you have to be ordained, you have to become like a, a, a title, a bishop. More and more pastors are becoming bishops, you know. It's a credential and then they put on this corresponding uniform. I'm not saying that it's evil per se, you know. But when it, it has become a passion, you know, when it has become an obsession, when a man of God is now convinced that he needs more than the Holy Spirit, you know, that's a diversion, my brothers. It becomes a diversion. We no longer glory in Christ Jesus, but we start to look at the flesh as something that has also a contribution in the work of God, which is not true. The flesh has nothing to contribute except being an instrument, a little instrument in the hand of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Apart from that, why? that's why Paul says we don't put confidence in the flesh and what the flesh can produce, you know, programs, rituals, buildings, titles, uniforms. I cannot contribute to the word of God. Mm. Our worship can be done anywhere, anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody should ever believe that when you worship God in the building, segregated for worship, 
Is that the only way of worship God? Are you convincing yourself that that is the worship that's acceptable to God? No. Because we all know that God do not reside in buildings made by human hands. <laughs> Heaven is God's throne. The earth is His footstool. And He, plays, he fills every space in the universe with His presence. Every day belongs to God. Every second, every minute, every hour belongs to God. And when He is looking for worshipers, He is looking for those who will worship Him in the Spirit, in the power of the Spirit, by the Spirit. Because the Spirit will never glorify anyone and anything except Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that the Spirit will not use People. He will use people for sure. And he will use things according to his purpose and design. He used animals, as we all know. He used a donkey to speak to Balaam. You know, he shook, he used birds to feed Elijah. He used fish to save Noah from drowning, uh, to save Jonah from from drowning. Yeah. So he use, he can use anything. You know, but the glory in them, instead of glorying in Jesus, to put confidence in them, instead of our confidence in the Lord, my, it has become a trap, a diversion. It has become unnecessary. Unnecessary, you know, uh, requirement. <laughs> It's unfortunate that Christianity has been sidelined in many ways. Uh, as I have repeatedly said, you know, we have become divergent. Uh, so, my dear brothers and sisters, as the Lord would speak to us through this verse today, uh, helping us to prepare our heart and our innermost being for next year. We will continue our walk with God next year, beginning of the year, until the end of the year. And we will walk by the Spirit. We will keep in step with the Spirit. We will yield to the Spirit. We will keep on sowing to the Spirit and not to the flesh. You know? Because our trust is in the Lord and no one else. We glory in Christ Jesus. We don't glory in buildings, programs. You know, many times we brag about our buildings because it costs us a lot. How much is the cost of your building? You know, hundred million. Wow. So impressive, you know. But it's only from the eyes of men. Buildings are impressive unto the eyes of men. But God is never impressed with building. <laughs> God is never impressed with programs, with rituals, with ceremonies, with liturgies. Because he knows they can, these things can never change the heart of man. Uh, only the blood of Jesus applied by the Spirit of God in a person's life. As that person calls sincerely and humbly you know, unto the Lord. Will a man's heart be changed? Hallelujah. And so for next year, I would encourage us to continue worshiping. By the Spirit of God. Huh? Let worship be a daily thing, a lifestyle in your life. Let worship be not something that's happening only on Sunday morning in the building. But let everything that you do, everything that you say, you know, be something that has become an offering unto the Lord out of your life, out of your body, you know. Our everyday life, you start in the morning when we wake up. And thank the Lord. Can you say that line? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for a brand new day that He is giving to us. Thank the Lord for a good night's sleep. Thank the Lord for wonderful opportunities that awaits us throughout the day to serve Him by serving His people according to the talents, to the gifts, the skills that He has given us. Thank the Lord for an opportunity to serve Him and to be used by Him. Hallelujah. And so every day, we 
Tell the Lord, here is my life. I offer this to you as a living sacrifice in response to your mercy and grace and love that you have shown me. I do not deserve this, O Lord. Huh. But you have shown your goodness to me. You saved me. You spared me. Instead of punishment for sins I committed, I received forgiveness from you. And I received blessings. So here is my life. I make this life available unto you throughout today. Use my life. Use my mind. Use my heart. Use my lips. Hallelujah. And everything you do throughout the day is a worship unto the Lord. Because you have offered your body. And what that body can do becomes an offering unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, do not limit yourself to worshiping on Sunday morning. Because even if you worship God on Sunday morning according to the ritual, the ceremony, the program that you have been used to, and yet your everyday life is totally different from the way you act and behave on Sunday morning, your Christianity is in a big, big question mark. You know, but when you follow the pattern that Paul has shown us and the rest of the early New Testament believers, you know, then you will become an authentic Christian life, an authentic believer and follower of Jesus. Wherein the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 12 says, your daily life will win the respect of the outsiders. Hmm. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 12. Your daily life will win the respect of outsiders. And so that, as you notice, there are two so that's, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders. Because the outsiders, will they will look at you, they will observe you, they will be convinced that you are an authentic one. You are not a hypocrite. Because they can see the consistency of your walk from sunrise to sunda sunset, from Monday to the next Monday. You are the same as Sunday and Monday and the rest of the day. You're the same. There is no hypocrisy. There is no play acting. There is no covering. There is no pretension. You don't pretend that you are religious. You're just as it is. You know, you, they, you will win the respect of outsiders. And then, so that you will not be dependent on anybody. You notice that line? You will not be dependent. Meaning you have matured so much in your walk with the Lord that you can live your life even by yourself. You can, you can, you can sustain your Christianity even by yourself. Uh, even if nobody will preach to you, nobody will pray for you, nobody will counsel you, you're good. You don't, you don't depend anymore on anyone. You have, you know, become, you know, a responsible believer. Hmm. So for this year, for next year, brothers and sisters, I encourage you, uh, pray and dream. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to, you know, quicken your <laughs> maturity <laughs> that you will not lag behind, that you will, you know, Grow fast and quick. Instead of being served, you start serving others. You know? Instead of always asking for prayers, you start praying for others. Ministering to the needy. Casting out demons. Praying for the sake. Sharing the good news. With grace, with love, but also with authority and confidence. Not in oneself, but confident in the Lord. Hallelujah. Continue to worship Him. Worship Him in the Spirit and by the Spirit of God. Seek opportunities to glorify Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We glory in Christ Jesus. You can take anything and everything away from a mature person and he will still glorify Jesus. He will still live for Jesus. Hallelujah. But you know the immature ones... <laughs> You only take a little thing from them and they get offended and then they stop, you know. Because they have not really matured. They have not really deepened their walk with the Lord. And so for this year, we thank God for what He has done. But we can thank Him even now for the many things He will do next year. 
I would encourage you, keep worshiping the Lord. Keep walking with the Spirit God. Do everything under the guidance, the inspiration, you know, the, the direction of the Holy Spirit living God. Set your heart on the Lord and glory him, in Him alone. You know, if you are blessed by God materially, praise the Lord. But if no material blessings, your conduct and behavior remains the same. Your godliness do not change. Hallelujah. Simply because your circumstances has changed. You have become matured in your walk with God. You don't depend anymore on anyone else. We're not saying that you suddenly, you know, will walk away from the brothers and sisters because now you can carry on with yourself. That's what we're not, that's what not the scripture is saying. We still need brothers and sisters. Our leaders are still there for us. You know, but we have matured to the point that we, we do not rely anymore uh, from them. Instead, we learn to partner with them. We have become partners in their, in this, in this walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. And I believe that God will give you clearer, better understanding as you continue to walk with Him. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Paul was saying, I pray, I keep on asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you will know him better. Imagine that Paul does not stop praying for the people of God. He keeps on praying. And even now as we read these verses which he wrote, we can feel, you know, the spirit of God praying, longing, desiring. That all the people of God will continue their walk with the Lord, maturing. Hallelujah. So that more of them, more and more of them becoming mighty, powerful, fruitful instruments in the hand of the Lord. Amen. I am imagining that next year will become even more glorious and wonderful. More and more of God's people will rise up, you know. And be used by God. Prayers will increase. Fastings will increase. You know, nobody is dictating. Uh, and yet by the Spirit of God, they will fast, they will pray. By the Spirit of God, they will walk. They will obey. They will go to places they have not gone before. By the Spirit of God, they will speak. They will share their stories. They will testify, not be embarrassed, not be ashamed. Not be intimidated. Hallelujah. And we will hear more testimonies by the Spirit of the living God because our circumcision is a genuine one. And this is done by the Spirit of God in the inner man. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, O Lord. Let this word, O God, Hallelujah. Be established in the heart and in the mind of your people. Every single one of them, wherever they live, wherever they are. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. This is your wonderful, glorious, marvelous, miraculous work. Establishing the word of God by way of revelation. In the spirit of each child of God. Wherever they live. So that out of the tribulation that they receive from you, O Lord, they will start behaving and start believing, O Lord, and start obeying. Hallelujah. Nobody is forcing them, but you, Holy Spirit, is directing them still. It comes from within, O Lord, out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth will speak. The action will be done. For the glory of our Father. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And now that we have received our portion for today, kindly answer this huddle question with your group before you go. 